Good evening, everyone. I didn't get to go to church tonight, but we'll go to church right here. And I'll talk to those that are listening tonight. And Lord, it's wherever we are. If we believe on Him, our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again that we come to you one more time and we thank you and praise you for this opportunity to get back in your word and read a little bit more and listen to you talk to us. And I pray you open our hearts and our minds that we can receive what you're telling us and that will give us all a better understanding of thy word and know how important it is to have you as our Lord and Savior. That when this life is over, we can go home to meet you. Now I pray, Lord, you know what these lips of clay. That they may speak your words of understanding. Will that help us all draw closer to you. These things we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. I will start chapter number three tonight, First Peter, King James Version Bible, and it starts out, Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. That don't mean to let them run over, or it means to listen to them. that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of these wives. Other words, don't hammer them, don't judge them, don't condemn them, that they can be won by your conversation. Two, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. They will hear you. They will hear the wise talking about the Lord and lifting him up. And they will show them, show by their actions and by their deeds, they do love the Lord. And they also fear him because they know what he can do. Verse 3, Whoso adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of a pearl. In other words, you don't have to dress all out to show your love to your husbands and to those you witness to. Because God looked in the heart, not on what's on the outside. But let it be, verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. It's very valuable that the showing the love from inside, not just for what's on the outside. Verse 5 For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husband. They were adorned through their good deeds, how they treated their husbands. Not the outside, not the making 
not the plating of the hair, not wearing but the gold and the silver, but with what was in their heart. And love from the heart is the purest, best love there is. Verse 6, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, it wasn't call him the Lord of heaven, he called him, him Lord because he was over her. He watched after her. He protected her. whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well, and not afraid with any amazement, not afraid of what the world will say, what others would say, but show your love from the heart. Don't worry about how good the outside may look, but worry, but look towards the goodness of the heart, that the heart was speaking love and understanding. Now, some people think this is putting a woman down. No, it's not a putting a woman down at all. He's given us an insight. It's what's from on the inside. It's the beauty of a person, the kindness and a good and a clean heart. Because God looks on the inside and not on the outside, as I have already stated. Verse 7. Now, he did not leave the husbands out at all. And the husbands need to understand this. Likewise, ye husbands, Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel. It don't mean we weaker. It means the one that may not be knowledgeable in learning like they are. It may be that they don't understand the way the man understands the scriptures. So it's him, he, he owes that to them to explain the scripture to them that they can grow together as, unto, as it is being ours together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Now, this is a very, very important scriptures. People wouldn't, a lot of people wouldn't think about hindering each other's prayers. But we very much can. And he's, he's wanting the family here, the husband and wife, both to understand that they would be their heirs of the same grace that saved one, saved them all. That through, through this same grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered, that you labor together in the Lord. And it's His commandments of sharing the gospel. He said to love one another as I have loved you. Verse 8, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love the brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. It don't say pity them, but love them and treat them with respect. Be courteous. Show kindness to them however you can. Verse 9, 
not rendering evil for evil or rallying for rallying, but con contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereof, thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing. So ye both can inherit a blessing. And as I read that scripture today, I wonder how many has hindered their prayers. How many has to try to get even? And how many has really inherited that blessing? I used to know a man And he was a deacon in a church. If anybody done him wrong, he said anything, he said he'd be the first one to say, I'll get even to him. Just let me catch him out somewhere. That was the wrong attitude for him to be a deacon of the church. He was supposed to have been setting an example for those around him that he was a talking to, witnessing to, in the churches. But no, he wanted to become a judge. He said, he wait, he let him catch him out. He would get even with him. Verse ten: For he that will love life and see good days. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. We cannot do this without the Lord living within us, without him being in our heart and guiding us and leading us and showing us the way because we don't have that much strength in our own selves. Verse 11, let him eschew evil, eschew, eschew evil is not to uh, not love evil and do good. He said, let us eschew evil or dislike evil and do good. Let him seek peace and eschew it, dry his best to keep peace the best to their ability. This is speaking to the family. This is speaking to the man and his wife. This is speaking to everyone that says they're a child of God. This is why many don't like it because they don't want to be reminded, especially to those that are in church all the time. They don't want to be reminded they're more to being a Christian than sitting on a church house pew and saying they are. It means more, it's more to me to be a Christian like to catch up to that we have to do because I tell you my friends this is more important and people think it is. They better be taking it to heart, myself included. Verse 12, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. He will bless those that are serving him and doing their best to serve him. But it's also against those that do evil. It is a sad day that we're living in when we're calling evil good and a good evil. But one day, somebody's going to pay a price. They've got the word. They refuse to read it. And they reject it. They won't believe it when they hear it read. Therefore, they will 
one day give an account to God. We can pray for them. We can tell them about Jesus. But it's up to them to receive it and accept it. But one day they're going to know how real he is. In verse 13, And who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? They might do things to the body to cause us trouble in the flesh. But God is in charge. He is over all things. And He knows how to protect us. They cannot touch the soul that God put it within us. Our soul is in the hands and safety of a just God. Verse 14, But and if ye suffer for righteousness, he said, If ye, but and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. He, he would set us here in a way that people will cause us to suffer. They think they're doing something great. But one day, they're going to see. But a lot of times, they don't realize they're turning against us and trying to terrorize us would drive us closer and deeper into the Word and give us a stronger desire to follow Him. And listen to his words. 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer. To every man that asketh you a reason. Of the hope. That is in you. With meekness and fear. Don't be afraid to tell them. Or confess that Jesus Christ is our Savior and He saved us through His marvelous grace and love and made us a fit subject for the kingdom of heaven and promised us a home in heaven one day when this life is over. Don't be afraid to share that with the world or with anyone that may ask us why we have this hope. Verse 16, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. All of us that are saved know what it means when he said accusers. We are accused some way or other every day of our life. But God is greater than those that accuse us. He is a great deliverer. He can set us free from all that. And he can help us override, uh, overcome those things. And still rejoice that our name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And sealed safe within. 17. For it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. If we suffer for well doing then we'll have that eternal home we talk about. But if we suffer for evil doing 
we're going to suffer many things that we don't want to suffer and maybe would not have had to suffer if we'd have hung on to him. Verse 18, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust. He was the just. We were the unjust. That he might bring us to God so that we could be saved and born again. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, or made alive by the Spirit, made alive to live forevermore, and to be put to death in the flesh, and mean this body dies out to the, to sin, and becomes alive in the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's so many things in this scripture that I I love. I'd love to be standing with y'all in a church somewhere talking with you where I can see you face to face. But I love everyone just as much if I did see you face to face because I know God's in control and I know His Spirit travels through the airways into your heart, into your hearing. And it will fill us with joy knowing that one day we can live together in that heavenly home that Jesus went to prepare a long time ago when he left this world and sent it back to the Father, took its seat on the right hand of God to prepare a place for us when we go home. Our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, it's getting we come to you to thank you one more time for these words you have given us one more time. We pray, O Lord, that you'll reach down and touch, heal, deliver, and set free. I pray, O Lord, if there's anyone lost, they'll come to you. I pray, O Lord, if there's anyone gone astray, this will be the night they'll return to you and come back to you. And Lord, I pray, O oh Lord, you help us continue to grow in the knowledge and the faith and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. That one day when this life is over, Lord, and you call us home, then we can step aside and bow our head and give you the praise, Lord, that we're not able, that we don't know how to give the day, because then we'll be face to face. But until then, we must remain on this earth till you call us. But Lord, I know the Holy Spirit can connect from heaven to glory, from earth to glory. And Lord, I pray one more time that you bless every listener. And now, Lord, we thank you one more time and ask your mercy on each one. These things we ask in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy.